Hello, this is Dr. Russell Jennings. Um, I'm proud to be back online, thanks to the help of my son, Christopher Jennings, um, uh, who's an audio-video um, guy. And he's been helping me get this system up and running. Um, and I hope that now we have good voice before we had terrible voice. Uh, today, uh, we'll advance and start talking about um, some of the issues that are important in pediatric and adult esophageal and airway problems. Um, and I just wanted to announce that we're now up and running. People are curious about me. Um, I founded the Esophageal and Airway Treatment Center at Boston Children's Hospital maybe 15 years ago. Uh, and two years ago, I retired um, and left it in the very able hands of Dr. Ben Zendejas and the team that he has there. Um, I've since been recruited to work um, part-time to help develop the program in uh, Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital in St. Petersburg, Florida, with Dr. Jason Smithers and Dr. Hester Shea. And I'm proud to say um, it is really a pleasure to work with such an excellent team. And um, we've recruited heavily from Boston Children's team to build uh, the St. Petersburg team. And it is really quite excellent from anesthesia to um, the team uh, rounding to uh, outpatient care, uh, to obviously the best surgeons in the world for these uh, particular problems. Uh, and I'm very proud to uh, start talking a little bit about some of the things that we're doing. Um, at St. Petersburg, um, Working with Dr. Smith, as we've developed um, a sort of a new technique for treating tracheomalacia. I think it may have application to adults um, with uh, tracheomalacia. And I wanted to explain the technique uh, and some of our early results. Uh, and it's been quite, uh, they've been quite good. So let's talk a little bit about trachea and tracheomalacia. We're excited about some of the new um, techniques that we've developed at St. Petersburg. Um, at All Children's Hospital. Let me just draw a little bit of trachea here. Um, so the trachea is composed of rings. Each ring normally is about this shape, which is about a four to five to one ratio of this cartilaginous ring to the membrane here. So it's a small portion of the total airway. And consequently, when we breathe in, it can only go up a little bit. Uh, the maximum would be 40 or 50 percent, and it can go out, making the airway bigger when we cough. So it has some motion that can go in and out of. Each of these rings um, of the trachea is made of cartilage, and between them is is membrane. This membrane is sort of um, flexible material. It allows the trachea to bend when it needs to bend, so it allows it to flex. And then at the level of the carina, which is where that splits, we then get rings going to the right and the left main stem, as this shows. This is really just a cartoon, but it's good enough. And of course, then we get cartilaginous plates going up to the, each of the smaller airways, as this sort of shows. Um, and this would be the right upper lobe here, which then branches. And this would be the bronchus intermedius which is usually a short segment of airway, which then goes into the lower lobe uh, bronchi, as shown here. So that's a, a normal sort of trachea. Typically, there's more rings in this, um, but we're just sort of using this for illustration. Okay, so what is tracheomalacia? Well, tracheomalacia can be quite confusing to those who aren't well experienced in it. And let me just describe some of the problems. The most common is a malformation, a congenital malformation 
of the cartilaginous rings. Rather than being like that, where they form, you know, a, a semicircle that's about four or five times as long as the membrane, the, they may be shaped more like a U, so the membrane is longer. And in that case, this membrane can move more. Sometimes they're shaped what we call bow or flat, flattened, and in that case, this membrane can be quite long. And this membrane is on the back of the, of the trachea. So in the U-shaped, when the child inhales, this membrane goes up to here, can go up 70 or 80 percent. And on the bow-shaped cartilages, this membrane can actually completely close off the airway. Uh, in each segment of the airway, can have a different response and a different shape of cartilages and therefore a different response to the changes of airway pressure with breathing in and out. This should be make sense. The problem with cartilaginous malformations, whether they're U-shaped, this is C-shaped, or they're bow-shaped, like a bow and arrow, some people call these Ds, um, is that they aren't going to get better with time. They're malformations. You, it's a congenital problem. As the child gets bigger, maybe it will able the child may be able to move more air, but the membrane is still going to be floppy, and the rings aren't going to change shape. Well, I want to talk about some of the innovations. Um, for C-shaped, like this, you obviously don't need to do anything. They're fine, that's normal, and that's what's supposed to happen. In the U-shaped cartilages, what we developed years ago was what we call the posterior tracheopexy. And in that case, we take the, member, the cartilages, which are shaped like this, and the spine, which is back here, and this is the the spine that is the bone in your, your back going out to the ribs right here. And we simply tack it to the spine with little sutures. And that keeps it from going in when the child uh, coughs and keeps the child's airway open so it can move the maximum amount of air. That's called the posterior trachopexy and has a lot of uses. A lot. Certainly treats trachomalacia quite effectively. Um, and that's been published extensively now. And it also is a way to prevent recurrent tracheoesophageal fistulas and can be used to repair posterior tracheal injuries. This is a very valuable technique that we developed maybe 10 years ago. Um, we did discover that when we work on the bow shaped cartilages, which are shaped like this, and here's the spine. Even when we take the membrane and bring it back and tack it down even twice uh, to the to the um, to the spine, we have initial success. But over time, this front wall of cartilage will sometimes settle down. And it will come down, and I can talk about why another time. And it will may it may end up sitting like this. And because the bow-shaped cartilages are often wide as the spine, you can see how they'll sit on the spine and can recapitulate trachomalacia and the closure of the airway during exhalation and coughing. And so we developed a procedure called the anterior trachopexy, where we can bring that forward and tack it to the sternum or the bone in the front and take it back to this position here. Uh, it's quite useful and it certainly works. Um, there's another strategy we've recently developed. And that strategy 
Let me see if I can um, erase some of these. That strategy, oops, that strategy is to take the is to take that trachea with the rings which are shaped like this and a membrane which is just too long here often you know 1.5 to 1 ratio or 2 to 1 ratio what we want to do is to bend those rings back into the correct shape well, how would we do that well the strategy we developed is to take this piece of the membrane out so now we're left with cartilages which are shaped like this and the membrane which we've removed a segment in the middle um, obviously there's technical details to this we won't get into that right now we can talk about another day and then we pull those two sides of the trachea together and when we pull them together we recapitulate the shape of the ring like this because we're pulling this corner in and this corner in and we sew the membranes together in the middle right here and we sew them together like that so now we have four to one ratio and c-shaped cartilages again um, we're excited about this technique it, we've used it many times now and we're getting very good results um, and the interesting thing is we don't have to use it for the whole trachea we can use it for only the segments of the trachea which are affected with the bow shaped cartilages there's no reason that we can't also in these cases do a posterior tracheopexy and pull that suture line back here like this and sew it to the spine and we've done that that helps to heal help it to heal so it doesn't re have recurrent fistulas because the thing I haven't drawn in here is the blood vessels and the nerves and the esophagus. But this technique is exciting. If we look at that strategy um, as a technique, we have this. If we look at the trachea from the back, and this is now the left side, Um, so this is the back, and this would be the cricoid, which is the the um, the top of the trachea. If this segment is affected, it's relative. No, sorry. Um, we can basically take a wedge shape out of here make that a hole in the trachea if the left main stem is affected we can do this take a shape out of there um, we can even do it to the right upper lobe whatever segment of the trachea has broad shaped cartilages and we can reform them into c-shaped cartilages to correct the congenital malformations that's what we can do then after removing that segment we can close this hole in the same fashion taking this for example from broad-based membrane removing a segment from the middle and then converting that to a more c-shaped cartilage with a suture line here for the membrane um, and we can do that in the in the um, bronchi we can do it in segmental airways and perhaps even smaller um, low bar low bar airways and segmental airways so we're excited about this strategy um, it's already proven its worth particularly in the trachea which is up in the neck um, in the cervical trachea where it's hard to move the esophagus out of the way safely um, so uh, this strategy which we're calling tapering 
or the tracheal taper. Hope you can read my writing. So the tracheal taper allows us to reform those cartilages so they have circumferential uh, support for the airway and limits the motion of the posterior membrane. Uh, I hope that you can see some of the worth in this. It is a difficult technique because it does mean we have to open up the trachea and provide oxygenation while we're doing it. And there are many technical details um, to make it safe. Uh, but I did want to share this technique, um, which was developed in uh, St. Petersburg at All Children's Hospital, uh, Johns Hopkins Hospital. And um, we hope that if your child is affected with this type of tracheobronchomalacia, um, you won't lose hope. There are uh, more options available. Thank you very much. I look forward to hearing from you. I'm Dr. Jennings.